Joe, of course, famously played that heckling golf fan in Happy Gilmore. Take a look. You're going to need a blanket and suntan lotion because you're never going to get off that beach just the way you never got into the NHL. And joining us now to remember Joe Flaherty is friend and fellow SCTV cast member Robin Duke. Robin, appreciate you being with us uh, here this morning. First off, can you tell us about uh, maybe the first time you met Joe? Well, I, you know, it was the 70s and Second City had just come to Toronto uh, at the Fire Hall Theatre. I was going to university and I would go down and watch the improv sets at night. And Joe, of course, was in the cast wow. with well, Eugene and Gilda and uh, Dan Aykroyd, Valerie Bromfield. And then they offered uh, improv classes on Saturday mornings for $10 for three hours with Joe Flaherty. So I took improv classes with Joe, $10. Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. It is unbelievable. Best $10 you ever spent, I'm sure. No. Yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> now, Robin, you joined the SCTV cast in the early 80s where you worked alongside Joe and other le legends like Andrea Martin and Rick Moranis and so many, mm -hmm. so many more. What made Joe so special? Well, you know, it's interesting. I loved Marty's quote about Joe being the anchor. Uh, but Joe had the best comic sensibility, I think. He just had that weight of knowing what was good. And so everybody, I think, deferred to him as far as what they had written. And he was, I think, made the ultimate choice of what would go ahead with uh, being filmed. So he was the... Uh, he was the master and everybody knew that. And you had to get mm. past him. You had to get uh, a scene or whatever past him. Now we also understand, uh, Robin, that you actually uh, credit Joe with uh, helping you get cast on SNL. Can you tell us about that? Well, that's right. You know, I did an audition for Saturday Night Live. Catherine O'Hara uh, had gone down for a week, called me, said she was leaving and to come down and uh, I met with Dick Ebersol, and over a period of about two hours, I think he had called some people, Dick Ebersol and Joe Flaherty was one of them. And I think Joe, once again, gave the go-ahead for me to get the gig on Saturday Night Live. So never auditioned. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Thank Robin, you, Joe. How will you remember him? What, what will you remember him most about? Well, I just think I'll remember Joe by the wealth of information that he had. Oh, oh my heavens, look at that. The wealth of information <laughs> I had from him, and I taught at Humber for 20 years, and I don't think a day went by that I didn't, uh, you know, give information to my students that I'd gotten from Joe. So he was just such a huge inspiration. And, you know, things like taking care of the other person on stage uh, was one of his tenets. Uh, also, let me think. Oh, golly. You know, there were so many. But, oh, I know he had such high standards. He didn't want you to get a laugh at the expense of the scene or another character. He didn't want you to get a laugh just for the sake of getting a laugh. It had to have a purpose and a meaning and a truth behind it. So all those things, I mean, that's what made him so great. And, and all that, you know, people that worked with him, I think understood that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm uh, also reminded, I think a lot of us have been over the last almost 24 hours now, Robin, that, uh, you know, Joe was born in America, but we certainly claimed him as uh, one of our own. I think a lot of people uh, yes. feel, you know, he endeared himself to uh, Canadians and Canadian audiences uh, so much. And we really appreciate the time with us this morning and helping us uh, remember uh, the late, great Joe Flaherty. My Robin pleasure. Duke, thank you.